Toronto. one's from Toronto. Oh, yeah. Wait, what happened about this? I heard about this Mexican um, There's a yeah. rainfall warning for Cambridge tomorrow. What, what, what's a rain yeah. cloud? Oh, like a normal <laughs> rain Scooch cloud. Over. It's like a lot of rain and a lot of wind. So, yep. so like, like a tornado? No, no. Just okay. there's a I was I was a little bit excited to do to do how to have like <laughs> I'm making party. hand motions. Oh, really? Um, have you guys heard of those? Those like Floridian Turn. hurricane shelter parties? No, I've never heard of that. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, that sounds, sounds really scary. like a, that sounds like having a party in the shed. That I think like basically that's what happened. Or like in uh, someone's basement and that basement being way too small for the amount of people that's there. And, and like somebody like turning a ho water hose on and just like spraying water on people. Okay, that's only fun if oh. it's warm outside. I thought you meant torna tornado shelter party as like when there's a tornado outside, you go to the shelter and you have a party inside. Yeah, to no, oh, literally. Really? That's oh. what I mean. Woo, we're not dead. <laughs> no, it's a, it's hey, a thing. A I would be cowering in the corner hoping to not die. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, clearly, because everyone just doesn't embrace the party atmosphere enough. You know? Because <laughs> well, everyone's like, like in the hurricane shelter or the tornado shelter, and then like, cows are flying outside and cars are hitting the side of the wall. Cows <laughs> don't literally fly in tornadoes, Chris. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's okay. <laughs> something out of cartoon. <laughs> not in movies too. All right, yeah. and yeah, I know, but it's yeah. like it's not Welcome something. Welcome to Bridgecast. Today I'm hosting, which is pretty exciting. It's my first time hosting. Um, I'm Purna, in case you didn't know that already from recognizing my voice because you're a dedicated follower of <laughs> BridgeCast. Season two, episode five. Ah, we're like almost halfway through this semester, I think. Mm -hmm. But I sometimes don't know. Um, anyways, so uh, today's going to be super exciting. And let's go around and introduce ourselves. OK, I'm Brandon. You probably recognize me from every other episode we've done thus far. Um, but I'll quietly again say I'm the founder of BridgeCast. <laughs> and uh, current third year student. Uh, I'm Shima. You probably don't recognize me. I haven't been around very long, but uh, I'm a 1A student. That's not true. You were on a few episodes. I was on one. One episode. I'm usually here, though. Just Yeah, you know, she's listening. she's our most dedicated follower, so everyone yep. should recognize her. Yeah. I'm Chris. I'm 1A. I was here before as well. Right. Yeah. Yay. Yay. How's it going? I'm tired. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Today I had tea, so I'm like <laughs> super pumped. So um, what are you guys going to be talking about? I'll talk about cursive as a dying art. Cursive as a dying art, all right. Yeah. And I'm going to be talking about the state of women's pocket sizes. That's it's a, real a little issue. bit preposterous. Okay, okay. <laughs> I read one of your articles, and I remember when it said something like, and men laugh at this comment and i was like yeah it's so true no, but it's a but problem, it's a problem. okay anyways well, we're getting ahead i think ourselves. we're i think we're gonna make that the first thing but let's hear what brandon's <laughs> gonna say uh i was thinking of talking about the um, need for sleep kind of from an economic perspective and also Ooh. from a personal hands-on three days <laughs> or three nights four days no sleep perspective i can see the dark circles happening again and i'm just yeah. a little bit uh, there's, a, there's a funny story with that i'll, I'll tell you that okay. when we get to it what oh, are talking about? Okay, and I am going to be talking about, um, oh gosh, brain fart. <laughs> aging. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be talking about uh, the fascination with aging uh, amongst like modern populations and cool stuff about that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of excited to talk about pockets because I never <laughs> get to rant about this enough. So <laughs> let's, Shima, do you want to introduce yeah, this for uh, all, sure. our, um, all our male audience? I mean, <laughs> yeah, so for our male audience, you may not know this, but women's pants never have big enough pockets, ever. And I feel like they just keep getting smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. They're more for aesthetic reasons, mm -hmm. not functional at all. Mm -hmm. And before you say that you can just wear men's pants, no, you can't because they're not tailored to your no female shape no which is women's different. pants are not tailored to my female shape so i just like, have to deal <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess you could deal with them but anyway aside from that so um yeah like it's and it's not even just pants it's it's women's clothing in general right like even even though you could argue that uh women's pants are just getting tighter and there's not room for pockets even when you look at things like dresses mm -hmm. which it's totally doable to put a pocket into Okay, they, they Max wears them. Max, my housemate, wears tighter pants than I do, and he has bigger pockets than I do, and exactly. I think that's an issue. Exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna tell you that as as fitted as my pants are, I have like five pens in my right pocket, 
in my house keys, which is like this big junk jingle of keys in my left pocket. And I have like $5 and change in the same pocket. And I have my wallet in my back pocket. And I usually keep my phone in there, but not. Anyway, yeah, I've got a lot yeah. of stuff in my pockets. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the articles that I did find were kind of geared around phone, cell phone sizes getting bigger and how women can't fit their cell phones in their pockets anymore. So okay. Have to make do with other <laughs> I can't even fit it in like a oh jacket pocket. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, women's jackets are the only c- piece of clothing that we can find with actual pockets in them. That's surprising. Um, I'll say about the pants. Yeah, it's going to be hard for you to find something your size. I'm, even I find trouble wearing, finding pants that fits me. Because yeah. they somehow all guys' pants go above thirty-eight inches in waist, and also they're they don't they don't go as short. Yeah, but like you can hem your pants. You can't hem. I mean, I guess you could you, you cut out do, your yeah. pocket and sew in another pocket. Yeah, but but that's you, just. But you want to buy pants that fits you, not pants that you have to like make them fit you by yeah. paying more money. Yeah, like it's different if you're like, okay, I'm gonna buy a suit. All right, I want to go have this tailored to fit me. Yeah. It's okay if everything's a little long, but. It would be rather absurd to like insert your own pockets or to hem jeans. I don't know if any of you do. You guys sew? Does anybody here no. sew? Yeah, I, do I sew. can kind of sew. Yeah. Like if you try and stitch jeans, it's, so it's, it's oh my tough. god, yeah, it's so bad. But you can also fold jeans. I mean, like that's always been in as a style. Yeah. But you yeah. can't fold pockets. No. That's that's <laughs> you can't make pockets out of out of just nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah. So why do you why do you guys think that there's like um, pockets aren't important because women's clothing aren't me- isn't meant to be functional okay it's just meant to be purely aesthetic like even blazers uh-huh. it looks like there's a pocket and you can walk up to it and it looks like there's a pocket there but there's no pocket. Oh, oh fun fact some of those are stitched together so that they don't get ruined yep yeah yeah no yeah. no no i have tried <laughs> oh okay <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, sorry <laughs> never mind yeah like I, there are some that i will like y- there are clearly stitches there so that you can open that up and actually yeah. use it as a functional pocket but mm-hmm. for the most part you can't find pockets in women's clothing but even for suits too for guys the front pockets are also um sewed and shut because you're not supposed to put anything in there well it depends on the suit you buy like there are a lot of suits like that's where you put your pocket square that's where you put like something folded oh, I mean, on inside. the sides not even the sides yeah really yeah all, all, i think most of my blazers i have if there's a side thing there's actual pockets there i have a funny story about blazers if, if it's not going to defer too far from where we're taking we're talking about go clothing ahead. yeah go right yeah. ahead all right. Go for it. so i went to a, a private school and um we all had to wear uniforms and our uniform was shirt tie blazer dress pants dress shoes mm-hmm. and if you didn't have any of those things in like fully pristine condition you got an infraction and x amount of infractions meant you got a detention so one day i like left my blazer at home and i got to school and i took my like winter jacket off i was like oh no don't have my blazer so if you don't have a blazer you get an infraction and then you have to go to like the school store and rent a blazer <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> oh my god okay i rented this blazer and i was like they're like oh this one kind of fits you here wear it i was like okay I can, whatever and i go to class and i'm like trying to put my pens in my pocket and i go what is in this pocket what is in these pockets and i start pulling up beef jerky <laughs> <laughs> there was so much beef jerky in these in this blazer. I was like, dear Gandhi, like what is all this beef jerky? Oh, it's so gross. And it was like kind of molding as well too. Oh, oh god. I was like, who does that? <laughs> like, this is not what pockets were designed for. I mean, like, granted, as a guy, I would have like probably put that in like a Ziploc bag if I was doing that. But you can fit like, a whole Ziploc bag of beef jerky into a pocket? Sometimes. <laughs> mine just exploded right there exactly see the fact that porna's mind just exploded mm-hmm. proves my point <laughs> yeah i also think too on the same topic that if we had purses as men if like that was socially acceptable there would be so much stuff in a guy's purse like think about what i have in my pockets right now i've got like five pens and like a oh, whole this stuff mm-hmm. i could have like a snack and like a drink <laughs> and like you know a whole, like a roll of trace paper like i would have like the <laughs> biggest purse ever and you'd be like oh i need a oh it's okay here here's a wrench i know you need that for something yeah, yeah no my per- like if i'm if i'm taking a purse anywhere except for studio it will have my whole life in it like <laughs> yeah so so like i would rather have my whole life on my body in pockets yeah. then I wouldn't have to carry a purse, uh-huh. which at someone else's house I might forget or leave on, on a table in a restaurant. Like there's so much, so many issues with having a purse versus mm-hmm. with yeah. pockets. And it's just, it's just cumbersome. Yeah, I want to be able to leave the house with my wallet and my phone and my keys 
maybe some headphones, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and not have to lug around an entire purse. <laughs> I can't do that. Unless I'm wearing a jacket and it's the middle of winter. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sometimes even like my jacket, I have a couple of winter jackets mm -hmm. that some that are more practical than others, but some of them don't even fit my phone yeah. and my keys together. Like I'd have to spread them over two pockets and then I can't carry money and other things. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's kind of laughable because you'll have on jeans in the front, those little tiny pockets, mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. The ones where you put like... Coins, like toonies and loonies. <laughs> you, can't, you cannot fit a loony in those pockets. Yeah, you cannot fit like maybe max a quarter. I can fit oh loonies goodness. and toonies in those pockets on our beds. No, no, I'm saying like, okay, so there's usually like the two side pockets yeah. and sometimes there'll be a little tiny yeah, yeah, pocket. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah, my, ours, you, can, you, can't, you can't even fit a quarter in there. Dang. Like I don't know what you could, I don't know what the purpose of those are. It's supposed to look nice. It, it cuts into your waist so it makes your waist look smaller. Are you serious? Yeah, that's, that's what other dresses, like that's what all those dresses with like the dark sides are for and. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it's like, again, an aesthetic thing. Versus male I mean, clothing. Would you say though that the reason why they're so impractical is that because th there's a huge demand for them to look nice on you? Maybe, but at the same time, like it wouldn't, it wouldn't look that much, like it wouldn't look that much different if there was just a little bit more pocket space. Hmm. You know it wouldn't, I mean? but then when you when you put stuff inside, it does make it, you know it goes outwards and like it's pretty like. Because I think a lot of designers like the like look of it being like slim fit onto your your body, and I think a lot of girls like that too. How it's just, just like, it just stuck to your skin, right? Mm -hmm. With no like s things sticking out from the side. So I think that's one of the reasons why there's no pocket space for you. Well, yeah. um, thinking about things sticking out from the side, maybe we can talk about. Um talk about aging and this fascination with anti-aging <laughs> <laughs> nice segue <laughs> because of uh, things sticking out from the side which apparently scare a lot of the population so just wait, to wait, give that that's a thing yeah okay so i'll give you some context um yeah. over the last like couple decades there's been a lot of scientific research on anti-aging but there's also been a lot of like marketing to to women specific more so than men but like also men about looking younger and so there's been this fascination with both looking younger and the aesthetics but also in becoming younger and like having the eternal fountain of youth mm -hmm. and and the general thought in the scientific community is that that's because of um of an aging population but no one's actually done any research on it so it's, it's like on on the social aspect of anti-aging so like it's a it's a very strange phenomenon that, that's happened and like there's there's this a very big emphasis on on like physically not aging but no one really talks about mentally not aging even in the scientific community because like exploring the brain itself is is such a, a new field that mm -hmm. that going in and trying to say hey let's stop the brain from from becoming less efficient is, is just way too far in advance but like so so it's this aesthetic fear of aging almost and so it's yeah comments <laughs> <laughs> so to, to better understand what you were saying it was basically um that more people focus on aesthetically aging which is true but not very many people are considering like the whole mental aging element of it yeah that and also um not very many people who are researching aging in any in any form are are considering that maybe people don't want to be young forever maybe people want to grow up and an age and then have a natural life cycle in some way it's funny you say that there's a friend of mine that wants to grow up and be an old man like he wants to be an old crotchety man in his lawn chair on his front yard be like get off my lawn <laughs> it's the opposite of where we're going i just felt like i had to say that <laughs> yeah yeah no like i i totally i i want to age not now but in in 50 years i, I want to be older than i am now physically and mentally i i mean mentally hopefully wiser mm -hmm. but um, uh, but like so i i find the whole process of aging important to to driving me as a person but i, I the the scientific community a mm -hmm. lot of it that is focused on this research is mm -hmm. is saying well maybe people don't want to ever be old so so it's just it's interesting to me that so many people are focusing on this 
on this anti-aging thing when I'm like, I want mm-hmm. a natural lifespan. Yeah. I think it's not just people don't want to be old, but they don't want to look old. So especially with parents, they don't like to speak up with their age. And I think a lot of parents are like that too. Mm-hmm. Because they, they like to be considered young, especially in the media, all the media too, you always see young people. Mm-hmm. And you know, in Hollywood and the popular culture, pop culture, everyone's young, right? Yeah. So I think, I think there's a whole mentality of you know being young equals to be being beautiful and being you know, full of life. So I think that's why a lot of people want to s- look young. That's why you have all these anti anti aging cream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, they, they don't they don't work at all. The funny thing is, like, of my two parents, my mom's very much like, okay, I'm old, I'm gonna be old, I'm gonna enjoy my oldness. And then my dad's <laughs> like, and yeah. and my dad is the total opposite. He's like, okay, I have to drink like five cups of tea of this kind, and and <laughs> have have oh like my. all this homeopathic medicine, and take all my vitamins so I can be young for another ten years. <laughs> That's really good, yeah. I, I got introduced earlier this week to a five-year-old as auntie, mm-hmm. and I don't know how that makes me feel. Wow. I've like, been an auntie since I was one. Yeah, so. but were you an actual auntie? N- no. No? But I like I don't think my brother's having kids ever, so yeah. um, I don't <laughs> think... <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I don't think I'm having kids ever, so like, different topic. We'll yeah, talk about that like, later. It just, I don't know. Like Being introduced as auntie so-and-so is just a little... It is. It a is. little much. Yeah. Well, I mean, like growing up, um, I have a lot of family in South Africa, and there was like cousins of mine that were like a year or two older, but oh, based yeah. on like how the tree worked, they were like my aunts. And so when yeah. we were like oh, 10 yeah, years old, they're like, well. I'm your aunt. Like we were, I was 10 and they were 11. And they were like, I'm your aunt. You're going to do as I say. I'm like, please, like you're a year older than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mom's youngest brother's around my age. Yeah. My, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. My oldest cousin could be my could like is old enough to have been my father yeah so so like the the age gap is is crazy but but i think getting back to to this to this fascination with aging Uh like i i just think it's crazy that people are afraid of that of of becoming the aunt or becoming the grandparent and having those moments in their lives like i i'm Mm -hmm. excited for those things well I mean, I'm not excited to be a grandparent because I don't really want kids, but (laughs) 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 I'm excited to become the great aunt of my friend's children. Yeah, Yeah. that's nice. I mean, like, like I I do look forward to getting older. Like, I've always wanted to be older as a kid. And like, I've always tried to act older than I am, which has worked in some things and hasn't in others. But um, I I, like I, I do want that natural process of like, oh, hey, like I'm now in my 30s and like, oh, all my friends are getting married and having kids. Oh, this is an interesting time. I feel like if everyone like the whole idea of immortality, if everyone lived forever, you'd get very bored very quickly, I think. I think you, like being arrested in time would would kind of freeze the way society like changes and develops. Like, could you imagine if we were the last generation of people and Mm -hmm. because of because no one got older so no one was like oh man now i want to have kids like (laughs) that would be very weird it sounds like a very weird like science fiction thing like something's in the water (laughs) (laughs) no one can age anymore people don't age anymore ah there's no kids what a weird way for the planet to die but i think but they wouldn't die because they would be more like true sorry you don't you wouldn't really have a life if you live forever right i mean the point of life is just to to prepare for death, right? To, and to dur- endure it while you're living. So, Chris, you found the meaning of life? Yeah. Why aren't you on, like, a mountaintop <laughs> professing it to the rest of us? But, but like, because no one can hear it from a mountaintop. <laughs> 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 but they can hear it on Bridgecast. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. But if you live forever, then what's the point of you even living at all, right? Because then, well, if it's me, just you living it every day, there's nothing, anything, anything special about your life then. So if, if it's just constant, then it's not special. But if life is sort of like, sorry, but if life is sort of, it's just like this thing that can end any, at any time, mm-hmm. you value life more and, and it's more precious to you than something that's just there forever. I don't want to live forever. I just like want a solid 300 years maybe. Oh, okay, wow. so l- l- let me put it as a question. If, if the idea of is, is almost like immortality versus not, let's say you're given the option of being immortal, but everyone else isn't. Would anybody take that? No. No, no, I wouldn't. But why wouldn't you guys take it? I just don't want to see all the people I I love go away. You know, have like see my parents gone, then my sister's gone, 
then like my children gone my wife gone my grandchildren gone and you know just see my whole family tree leave me yep and just no, but you can like chill with your great grandkids you know <laughs> yeah, you could be part of your your family forever yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's a nice idea it's, that's uh that's great great grandpa chris i know all of them out there <laughs> looking better than you at 30 years old <laughs> <laughs> yo great grandpa chris man he was on a skateboard earlier and like oh my god he's i can't believe he was my great grandfather yeah, yeah I mean, he's like 200 years old and i mean the that. stories this guy has <laughs> i think at a certain point your brain will like explode of all the information it's stored over like say 200 years i think you just start to forget things yeah that's, I, that's a scary part like like as as mentally sharp as you are, like you do some you do like crazy stuff for two hundred years. Do you remember what you did year twenty two? Yeah. Year fifty seven. Only if there was something great that happened. Even then, I think yeah. you'd be like, oh man, I like ah. Like imagine your parents, your parents or your siblings. That's pretty scary. Yeah, like I, I don't think I would want to take that again for the same reasons. In that, um, you know, if you live forever, you end up seeing like the people that around you pass away while you're still around and i, I think that's a very like unsettling thought yeah. especially I, especially go, if go it's ahead. not especially if it's not natural like if i'm the only one that's around that'd be very scary but it's funny because the whole sorry the whole idea of of anti-aging kind of pushes that idea a little bit because not everybody wants it but some people do so the people that do want this whole anti-aging idea like i think it, it it's moving towards where some people would opt in for immortality forever i feel like the thing that would bother me the most would be that no one else would share my experiences so and i think that a lot of creating friendships is based on people who share experiences so i'd be lonely just because i wouldn't be able to associate with people the yeah. way i can if i'm in their age but but i guess if if you had like an anti-aging society mm -hmm. and and so many people like maybe f even just 50% of the population decided that they don't want to age and they could do that, then then you'd have enough of a population that would be able to associate with each other. Mm -hmm. So there would be that, you, you'd still maintain that relationship. There's so many movies, I'm thinking about this now, there's so many movies, TV shows, and even an anime I watched not too long ago that like f that f kind of centers around this idea. There's, an, there's, an, there's a really good anime for those that like watching anime called Bakano. And it's set in like the sort of like 1920s, 1930s. But the whole cr uh, chronology of the storyline is it starts in the 1600s and somebody develops this like immortality potion. And there's this whole group of people that move through history that like eventually they all try and like kill each other because, you know, they don't think they should all be immortal. But it's this, again, it's this whole society that started together on the same ship in like the 1600s that like, you know, they've traveled through all the way to like the 1900s together. That's and pretty, yeah, yeah, like, I, I guess you'd get bored if the same 50% of the population, but, I mean, it's 50% of the population, so it, yeah. it depends on how many people are aging with you. But then yeah. I guess also I, would, I wouldn't want to be, or, or being immortal with you, I wouldn't want to be immortal if I was, like, frozen mentally as well, Yeah, you know? But mm -hmm. then at the same time, people would take others' ideas more seriously, disregarding age because if everyone looked the same whether you had f 50 years on this earth or 25 years on this earth mm -hmm. you wouldn't necessarily disregard someone because of their youth but, yeah that's true but then maybe it's good to disregard some people because yeah. of their youth like but you i mean not to but like if the <laughs> idea is solid you'll take it as a good idea you won't take it as some ramblings by some 12 year old you know but i think that makes life interesting you know all the disagreements you have and you know it just you yeah. see like a you see like a five year old with a very high pitched voice like articulating nuclear physics physics to some thirty <laughs> yeah. year old. Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. actually um <laughs> <laughs> here's where you're wrong in your proof. What are you five years old? I've been around for a hundred years here. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Avatar. Yeah. You guys remember that? Yeah. Okay, the the oh, anime, yeah. not that the, new, the, the, the movie. The, like, the, the last cartoon. airbender. Cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, the yeah. cartoon. Yeah. Because he's like, I'm 112 years old, and you're looking at him like, no. No, you you're 12. I mean, you were frozen for a hundred of them, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever you say, it's not it's not the words. It's of not completely accurate. I I don't believe you. Nah. Okay. Um, I think we should talk about sleep because I'm. I'm dying asleep. for some yeah yeah i am dying <laughs> for some today i woke up and i was like oh let's go back to bed and then i didn't and it was just <laughs> the worst decision ever 
I had that this morning too, where I woke up and I was like, it was like seven. I was like, oh, I need to go to school. I have too much work to do. Oh, but I want to go back to bed. But I shouldn't because I won't wake up. But I want to go back to bed. It was, I have this. I have this argument with myself every morning. Every oh, morning, I set the alarm for seven thirty, and then wake every, up at ten thirty. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then every morning, I mean every night, I set it for seven thirty, and then every morning, I set it for eight, mm-hmm. and then. Every eight o'clock, I set it for like oh, eight fifteen, yeah, and I then I actually wake up. So yeah. maybe I should yep. just go for eight fifteen. Are you yeah. are you guys the type of people that make your beds in the morning? No, no. <laughs> no. Oh okay, me too. Because to the people out there that do have to make their bed in the morning, you're missing out on some valuable sleeping time. But I try to fit like a, a short little workout in that time so that I oh don't. Whoa! So do workout. Hold on. That. Explain this. Okay, so like I figure if I'm going to work out at any time. I might as well work out in the morning when I'm not tired. <laughs> oh, I thought okay. you were going to say when you're not mentally present. Uh, like, I, like, okay, you know I, I mean? wake up and I'm there. I'm ready. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I'll do like, I'll try to do like Zumba or, or like Pilates. Or like as something. soon as you wake up. Yeah, oh as soon goodness. as I How wake up. That? That's like, dedication. I, I wear workout clothes for PJs so that I can do this. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you say this because the whole reason I brought this topic up is I was listening to a Freakonomics uh, podcast, which are fantastic to listen to if anybody else so like what? enjoys Freakonomics. Mm. Freakonomics, um, it was two authors that initially wrote two books, Freakonomics and Super Freakonomics. And they, 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 they look at, um, and they look at just like everyday things, uh, occurrences. Um, and then they actually break down the whole economics behind it or like the whole, um, statistics behind why people do something like a recent podcast I listened to their, listen to of theirs is why belts. And you're like, well, I don't know. And so you listen to it and you're like, Actually, the belt is very, if, if the purpose of, I know we're straying away from sleep, but I was just explaining this really quick. <laughs> if the purpose of holding your pants up is to hold your pants up, suspenders do a much better job with more comfort than a belt does. A but belt, a belt accentuates your waist. And it can. So, so, so then, so, so they kind of, they put the idea out there and then they bring in all sorts of experts. They bring in like, um, on this particular occasion, they brought in like, uh, fashion historians, people that have looked at like the history of fashion and they bring in like different professors from different places. And they actually have a very intelligent conversation about very like everyday occurrences. So the whole point of sleep was, it was a two part, uh, podcast and it, they talked about the economics of sleeping, about why sleeping is important and do we really need eight hours of sleep a day? And, uh, what they found in a lot of their uh, analyses and talking to other scientists and people that have been researching this for a while is that, um, not everybody actually needs eight hours and the whole idea of you better get your eight hours in, otherwise you won't get a good night's sleep. Um, that isn't actually true and there's some people that can get away with six hours well this is weird um my microphone is going is that just your, it's just yours it's just oh, mine hey, yeah i don't know okay well we'll keep keep on going this is weird i think it's just the wire might be it? uh oh it's gone oh it's gone that's okay. good so let's not move <laughs> and, and, and so w- another thing that they looked into was they looked into uh, time zones and how time zones affect people's pro- productivity. They took the uh, they took two cities in Texas, um, and they looked at uh, sorry. There's two cities in Texas. They were in two different time zones. They were about an hour apart from each other, but their working days still started at the same time. And they found the people that were in the time zone that wound up getting up a little bit earlier on average, compa- statistically compared to the next city, made 10 to 14% more in terms of like wages than the other town did. And so there's this whole uh, economic idea that, yes, if you do get up early, you can get more work done, but that can actually make you more productive and that productivity can actually wind up leading to um, you know, more prosperity in that sense. And I think the funny thing is, is when you look at different industries, like, um, as students, like uh, you go to bed like whenever and kind of wake up whenever. <laughs> <laughs> Especially here, you're like, oh, I have a deadline, and you'll you'll stay up for three nights and four days to finish your deadline, which is a really <laughs> bad idea. You start to hallucinate at like day three. That sounds not fun. Uh, th- there's so many stories. Like I think our class in s- second year, two A, was the worst for not sleeping. Two A and one B. There was people I knew that like 
did not sleep for, I think the record was five nights. Oh, Somebody wow. did not sleep for five nights and they were making a physical model. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. And we walked into the studio one day and they're just like cutting materials. We're like, hey, hey. And he's just in there still cutting materials. Just like, just looking straight down, <laughs> like dead. And we're like, go home and sleep, please. <laughs> we, we're, we're terribly afraid for your safety while you're operating sharp knives around your hands, cutting material. Uh, it's it's bad and um I why did they need to do that though like i i, I didn't know the better see. question is how do they do that at all it's just sheer willpower i don't people have different strategies i know there's somebody there's there's somebody i know that uh she drinks just a sip of of, of an energy drink like every few minutes so versus consuming the entire thing in one go she just kind of like stretches it across the hour and that just like keeps a consistent like energy high to, to keep going um I'm personally if i wound up staying up really late i wound up taking like 10 showers in a day for some reason because I, I, on the point of sleep have you guys ever pulled an all-nighter no. yeah once once grade nine <laughs> close no. close okay how long was your all-nighter like did you do, like stay up 24 hours and fall asleep right afterwards or did you go longer than that well, i stayed no. until 6 a.m okay that doesn't count it's not an all-nighter yeah i know I went to school and then I came home yeah. and then I slept. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I slept at like 5 p.m. Oh wait, actually I think I had, it was it was during summatives and it was the first time I'd had summatives where I'd actually had to do things for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I, I think I had another summative due the next day. So I was like, yeah. I was going for it till, till around 11 and then. So I, I was in, I think I was in 1A and I stayed up three nights and oh. I was awake for three nights and four days. And I was working on our final deadline, which is a really bad idea. If you're listening, go to sleep, okay? Because it <laughs> not really, right now. You're not right now, please. Not, not when you're listening to us. But like when you're when you're up late and you're like, ah, man, I, I'm gonna pull that all nighter. Don't do it. Like unless you absolutely have to, you're gonna be more productive if you go to sleep. And uh, there's people that have told me this before that would be laughing hearing me talk about it now. But it's true. <laughs> okay, I've, I've realized it. Okay, I'm sorry. You're right. Um, but that 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 night that i was awake for three nights you start to like there's weird things that happen to your body like within the first i'll call it uh, 36 hours you start to feel like really dirty like you, you feel like there's this film over your body and that's or at least i do and that's why like i shower so often and you wind up eating like twice as much as you usually would oh for sure because you're like trying to keep like your body's burning so much more energy trying to stay awake having not slept um, and there's, there's so many weird things that happen. you start to hallucinate. The hallucinations aren't fun because it's like you're like cutting material. You're like, oh, is that my finger? No, okay, it's not my finger. Okay. <laughs> I'm cutting material. And it's just like it's it's a really not great. And, and so listening to this podcast, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you can actually make more money if you get up earlier and do things. But to tie this all back into where I was going to go with this is in the architectural community or in the design based community, people wind up actually being more productive at night sometimes. Like I know there's a, there's a lot of people, especially my class, that work really great when it when it's like 10, 10 p.m. and forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my peak hour. Mine too. Yeah, mine, mine's mine definitely well. the evening. Yeah, and, and I think that that's something. I think that has something to do with the whole, uh, in relation to design, the whole artistry of something, like the fact that mm -hmm. you are crafting something. You're not crunching numbers in an office on a spreadsheet where at your optimal time is when you have an optimal amount of sleep. Like as designers, I think those moments where you have like partial hallucinations because it's, <laughs> it's, it's a weird time of the night and you haven't slept very long. It can actually lead to some really inspiring work or things. Um, has that really to this inspiring work? Actually, I designed my first iteration for my last studio project last term that way. I was thinking about snakes and uh -huh. I laid down on the couch in the studio and I took like an hour nap because I was so tired. I was awake for like 36 hours, I think, or something. And I woke up. I was like, okay, we're doing a project about snakes. The building is going to be shaped like a snake. And I wound up like designing this whole snaking office tower. And it actually didn't turn out exactly like I wanted it to. Uh -huh. But the point is, is that like I had a weird dream come to me because I was in like I hadn't slept very much. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I feel like 36 hours is, is not good, even if you're in the creative field. Like... I feel like you should sleep every night at least. Yeah. I actually yeah. had a friend who used to experiment with different sleep cycles. Yeah, yeah. Um, throughout high school, like whenever we had a, <laughs> an exam or a culminating kind of period, he'd always switch to some kind of weird sleep cycle and he'd yeah. test out different ones every time. Did it work? Well, 
it depends. I mean, <laughs> he used to eat way more. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> he would tell us about how, oh, I woke up this morning at like, I slept for three hours uh, last night. And then after this class, I'll probably go take a nap. And then yeah. like, you know, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, that's, that's actually called polyphasic sleep cycles. There's a roommate of mine that did that frequently. And he did it, I think, for four or five weeks straight. And he did, I don't know if it was the Dymaxion. There's different names for different ones yeah. because like you can sleep uh, every three hours. So every three hours you take a 30 minute nap yeah. or something like that. And I don't remember which one he did, but I saw him and he looked so tired. And I was like, man, you're looking really tired. He's like, I feel like I've been awake for three months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and I mean, <laughs> but I've gotten the amount of work done that it would have taken two people to do in six months. So I got a lot of work done, but I don't feel like I've slept. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's the danger idea though, because there's, is, is you can get sleep debt where your body sort of um okay so when you if you don't sleep for a long period of time yep it's you, you accumulate sleep debt right and mm-hmm. the more you don't sleep and the long and the more you sleep deprived it's harder actually to pay off the sleep debt so when you think you have a good night rest you actually don't and you, the longer you go through it the, t- the harder it is for you to feel more awake during the daytime oh yeah so sleep is something is not something that you can like deprive yourself of yeah. four hours and then sleep four hours the next four more hours the next day and hope that that balances out it yeah. doesn't no. actually yeah, work no, it doesn't. Not at all. It, it's it's like long-term patterns that that actually are part of your sleep cycle yeah. like um, a family member of mine she used to do uh, night shifts of work for mm-hmm. like the longest time and now she's no longer working um, and she's actually having a very hard time going back to a regular sleep cycle mm-hmm. like because she's done it so often her body just like wakes up at like um, you know, 10 p.m. at night as if she's going to work and then she starts to feel tired at 10 a.m. in the next morning when she would get back from work. And so it's not as it's not like, oh, yeah, I'm done working. Uh, cool, I'm going to go and sleep like, you know, 24 hours and wake up and be fine. I'll sleep a regular sleep cycle. It's 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 ingrained in your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, I have the problem of needing way more sleep, I feel like, than the average person. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I just let myself sleep, I'll sleep for, like, a solid 13 hours. Oh, yeah. Same. Yeah, I've done that before. Like, Maybe 14, yeah. I've done 15. That's me in the summer, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I was a child, uh, par- um, apparently me and my brother, we would sleep for 12 hours straight. Oh. And then we would wake up, and we would be awake for 12 hours, and then we'd sleep for 12 hours, <laughs> and then awake. Like, it was it was perfect. I wish I had that life again. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that on a few days. Like, the other day, I forgot to set my alarm clock, and I woke up, I'm like, <gasps> it's 10.30. Oh, no, I have a studio deadline today. And I ran to school, and I'd slept for almost 10 hours that day. And I was just like, but I was so overtired that my body couldn't actually hear the alarm clocks going to have that problem. I've got like uh, 20, yeah, 20 alarms yeah. and I even have a Fitbit that like vibrates on my wrist yeah. when my alarm goes off. It's like mm-hmm. violently shakes my hand and even that doesn't wake me up yeah. anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I have that problem as well. Like I have two alarm clocks now. I need to get a third one because both yeah. of them will <laughs> 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 really, I mean, this ever growing. So it'd be a really funny art installation in your room. Like <laughs> alarm clocks on top of alarm clocks. And like different the- sounds for them. <laughs> yeah. And they, they all like make a song in the end. That'd be super cool. <laughs> the That'd only really one cool. on my phone that actually wakes me up is that like that alarm alarm <laughs> on the iPhone. It iron stresses iron. me out <laughs> too though. <laughs> <laughs> I started That's sleeping the only through it. One that works. The nuclear oh. launch code. Somebody launched them. Oh no! No, because I literally like I hear it, and then I'm literally out of bed, ready to attack. <laughs> like I need to find a new alarm. I've just Note slept to through self, everything. If Shima's sleeping, do not play that alarm clock near her. You get chopped in the face. No, yeah. for sure. I have an uncle actually who, if you try to wake him up. Some limb is fleeing out at you. (laughs) 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 So guys, watch out. It runs in the family. (laughs) A lot of the times I'll wake up and if someone wakes me up, I'll like scream at them. (laughs) Because that's just what's happening. I enjoy waking up my dad. He wakes up like startled sometimes. I'm like, dad, wake up. (gasps) Wait, wait, (laughs) Mine too. Yeah, that's (laughs) me. (laughs) <laughs> and he'll like like he's getting to that age where he'll fall asleep kind of whenever <laughs> yeah. so he'll fall asleep while he and the the easiest way to make him fall asleep is to put on cnn and be dead quiet <laughs> <laughs> CNN and he'll, is super he'll slowly boring. lull in and out of sleep it's really funny i need to sneak out of the house i need to f- oh, turn cnn on okay no literally that's that's the only thing that works <laughs> that's funny all right um so I think we should talk about cursive writing, handwriting. Yes. I call Cur- it handwriting. Cursive writing. So, 
if you haven't been writing, I write cursive. But actually, it's, what saddens me is that it's, it's become a dying art. And I read this article recently about how, the, especially in the States, mm -hmm. they're starting to eliminate cursive um, handwriting from the like, curriculum. So around 41 states right now have removed it entirely. Mm -hmm. And even Canada, too, that's starting to happen. Already in Quebec, they, they eliminated cursive handwriting, teaching it to kids. Okay. Already. And in Ontario, they, they, you know how when you're in grade three, mm -hmm. they teach it to you? Mm -hmm. They're starting to wean away from that and not actually at all even teach people how to mm -hmm. write cursive. Okay. And it's kind of sad because it's, it's an art as well as also a way to sort of, like, to, um, Get, um, like have your ideas written on paper and like brought into reality because when you write something on hand in, when you write something out it's more it's more of a intimate thing where it helps you to think about or remind you about stuff right mm -hmm. but if you just can't, if you just type it out on something it's just you have don't, you don't have that intimate connection anymore yeah no i would agree i mean I write. yeah I like, write. yeah like i still write too like yeah. i write like when we have an essay due for something yeah. i yeah, still I write, write that out by, by hand, hand. Yeah. Like, yeah. my first copy is always done by hand yeah it's got like doodles on the side <laughs> yeah. and, and crossing out and oh yeah. this is horrible oh, written all over it. <laughs> but when you also when you handwrite though you want it to look nice and I and I do think hand and like cursive writing looks a lot better than prints. Yeah. So I don't know how you guys say that see it as but I I think it it's just, important for your foundation to be in cursive yeah. writing and when you start to write to understand how cursive writing is. Yeah. But I feel like after a certain point um your writing just turns into kind of your own style and it's usually yeah. a mixture between print and cursive exactly yeah yeah well like i i even wonder um first of all why was cursive writing brought around and at what point did people stop writing in cursive and switch to just kind of just writing reg like normal i don't know why i call it normal just writing non-cursively uh -huh. like I, did, did you find anything about that no i can not say anything about that I, isn't cursive supposedly faster because you don't have to do the whole lift up your pen Go to the next letter. Actually, yeah, but it depends on the person. For me, it's a lot faster in print. But some people say it's they can't write the cursive is too slow for them. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like I guess it's how it's anything. Once you become proficient, yeah. it winds up becoming a better option. Like yeah. I know there there are people, there are architects that used to do everything by hand. That for them to draft right, like write yeah. everything in all caps, is like draft. Like they're way faster at that. It's yeah. scary to watch them because like boom, 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 like it's all capital letters and they're picking the pen up to like write everything. Yeah, and you're like you're writing faster than I can. This is scary. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, in I remember in grade six, my teacher used to be very strict about it. Yeah, yeah. And she'd only ever write in cursive on the board, and she would only ever mark something if it was written in cursive. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Unless wow. she unless she wanted a digital copy yeah. or like a like a printed copy, in which case. It had to be Times New Roman size 12, you know. What? Yeah, I remember yeah. those like days. Um, yeah. And I remember <laughs> at the beginning of the year her explicitly saying, if you can't read cursive, you're out of luck because that's the only thing I'm going to be writing in and you're going to have to learn. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just remember like teachers being like, this is how people write in the real world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But like they would tell us about how by the time high school came around, we'd only be able to yeah. write in cursive. Yeah. yeah they were so wrong about scared that. Scared everybody. Oh, my God. We got to learn how to write in cursive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, in the business world, you write cursive. Everyone writes cursive. But now, I would just use I mean, like, emails and technology. In, in any documentation, I feel like you aren't supposed to write cursive like on your customs forms, when you're signing things out oh, from no. like, fancy yeah. places. Like, yeah. They don't want that cursive. No. Uh -uh, uh -uh. No, uh -uh. no. I I mean like it's funny we talk about cursive and like the older generation having done that because like I think that also contributes to um, people's signatures because I'm gonna be the first to say my signature sucks. <laughs> it looks like I'm still five years old when I, <laughs> when I sign documents. And the problem is is that now that it's like on like all sorts of ID, I have to stick with that signature, even <laughs> if I wanted to try something different. So I'm like still like, er, Brandon. <laughs> it looks. But like my dad's signature is like, it uh, looks good. Yeah. And I think that's because like their whole generation is was brought up learning how to write in cursive yeah. and that yeah. like for the foundation of that. I am. Um, <laughs> My, I looked at a Frank Gehry sketch and I was like, yeah. I want to be Frank Gehry. So I made all my cursives, well, I mean, all my signature t to look like Frank Gehry buildings. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my signature is pretty nice. <laughs> I mean, I really like my signature. People, yeah, me too. people tend to look at it and say, where did all the letters go? Where's your name in this? It's just a but straight I line. Think, well, it's not as well. <laughs> There's some straight bits, but um, it's very quick. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, 
a lot of curve and line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to get back, get back to the idea of writing, do you think that that's something that is going to disappear from schools pretty soon? Because a lot of elementary schools are moving to like yeah, tablet, I tablet think, programs. Yeah. And everybody's got a laptop in their hand, and textbooks are now all e-textbooks. Yeah. Do you think that I, r writing yeah. is going to become a dying practice? I think soon. So first cursive, now it's going to be handwriting. And in the future, everyone's going to have keyboards to, to, to uh, keyboard communicate. In, in, back in these days, <laughs> kids had keyboards <laughs> attached to their hands. <laughs> <laughs> now we have them in our brains. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think... I, 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 <laughs> I think, especially being at the school, um, you learn a lot of valuable things about um, tradition in a yeah. way. Like, I don't know if this has hit your year yet, but everyone usually winds up buying a fountain pen around oh, the same oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah for has. sure. And yeah. it's all the exact same Lamy fountain pen. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just in different colors. Yeah. I, I still use my, my Staples liquid. OptiFlow. Yeah. I've seen it. Okay, those oh, are those, those are like are. cheaper and oh, they, sure. they 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 the run best. just like a fountain pen. Like my friend, he used to have like really really nice fountain pens, and I'd yeah. steal them, and yeah. he'd be like, ah, don't steal them, <laughs> 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 because they were so expensive, uh, and like right. I'd use them, and they they flow the same way. Guys, yeah. Staples OptiFlow, literally the best <laughs> pen ever. Not that, a sponsor. On not a budget, <laughs> Staples OptiFlow. <laughs> but actually, I don't like Staples OptiFlow because it just. I like the scratchiness of a fountain pen. I like how it just the way it sounds on like a piece of paper. Yeah. Whereas OptiFlow is just it's just too smooth for me. Well, yeah. So I mean, to, to get back to the idea of pens, I don't know anybody else that's not in architecture that doesn't write with a fountain pen. Yeah. yeah Everybody yeah. I've met outside of this building that has a fountain pen also works in an architectural office. Yeah. Uh, like uh, friends of mine that are in business, I've like been around them writing with a uh -huh. fountain pen. They're like, "What is that?" I'm like, "It's a fountain pen." They're like, "Where did did you pull that out of like your great grandfather's trunk or something?" <laughs> <laughs> no, people still make these and people still write with these and they're still fantastic to write with. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> like like they, they don't get it and i think that that's something important about the school is that in in its weird sort of like traditionalist way you learn the importance of writing by hand you guys yeah. you guys right now are learning the importance of drafting by hand yeah you don't realize you're asking me earlier about like do we get to learn technology <laughs> later <laughs> uh, yeah. once once you move into like, drafting on the computer or modeling on the computer um there's many great benefits to that but i'm still uh, a proponent of doing things by hand to understand yeah. things because as you talked about earlier when you write you actually think while you're writing yeah exactly and so the same uh technique so to say applies to drafting when you draft by hand you're thinking about space you're aware of how big something is like when you learn how to line weight properly you're aware that this fat line means that that's that's a very thick object mm. and this faint line means it's in the distance or something and understanding those sort of spatial elements adds to your architectural language in a way uh -huh. that if you were to teach somebody just on drafting you can get lost in model space like you can yeah. go into an autocad file that is like kilometers by kilometers by kilometers and you can be working on the most infinitesimal detail in this big in this big project not understanding that that's not ever going to show when you print it uh -huh. um and, and so to kind of tie that back into writing i think that that's a very important thing because um I, I think when you write, you do think. Like I, I know teachers in high school used to tell me that you know write your notes out because writing it, write it twice because it'll stick in your head. Because yeah. when you write it, you you're thinking in your head as you're writing and you're reading at the same time. It's exactly. it's, it's yeah. more reinforcement. Yeah. And and I think that that's something that should be almost fought for in uh, schools yeah. is, to, is to kind of maintain that. Yeah. Also with the use of sorry. But these are word processors too, right? It's so easy to delete a word or to use spell check, but when you actually write things in, out physically, yeah. you you have you you have the intention of actually making every letter and every stroke count, yeah, to make sure that it's legible and it makes sense when you write it out grammatically. Yeah, I remember as a kid, my mom disabled spell check on all the computers in the house. She's uh -huh. like, "Nope, you're gonna learn it. Pull a dictionary out." This was like. Uh -huh. 2002 2003 yeah. before google was ubiquitous and you're like <laughs> google spell for me please uh, today i asked how to spell jury <laughs> oh, in yeah. front of jury Shouldn't in front of um rj and the entire 1a class yeah yeah oh, and rj oh. was just like how'd you pass the pricey yeah he literally <laughs> said that okay well uh, i think my pricey essay was pretty good but you know. well you're in here yeah. anyways <laughs> so it must be but I, I think that that's uh, in, in addition to drafting by hand. There's a lot of architecture schools that start that don't teach drafting anymore, mm -hmm. and I think it's so important to have that because it 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 helps you even if you do just digital after first year. Uh -huh. like, like there are people in my class that drafted up until last term, and yeah. like they still did things by hand. And 
Um, whether or not you do that or you wind up moving to computers like I did, you, you still have that sort of spatial understanding and how big things are and that, that's so important in the foundations of, of architecture, I think, much like writing by hand and thinking while you write is, is important to people's yeah. foundations. Uh, yeah, I think so too as well. Yeah. Um, so I think we're kind of nearing the end and Brandon had some fun things to talk about. Yeah, so, so we'll um, for those that don't know, the Grand River Film Festival is coming up here very soon. I think it's hap starting next week um, and we're, fingers crossed, potentially there might be something for um, us to maybe interview some people from the film festival potentially. Um, but in addition to that, uh, one of the events is actually being held at the... Um, at the architecture school, they're, they're, they're screening a film there. I'm trying to find which film that is. Um, I think it's happening. Is it the one with the, the three old ladies? The three old ladies. Yeah. What is the three old ladies? Yeah. It was it was one of the I was looking at the poster and there were three old ladies and it said it was in one of the halls. That's probably it. Um, man, I really wish I could find this. I'm sorry. Give me two seconds. Banter, 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 yeah. banter. Okay, here yeah. it is. Um, <laughs> Friday, November 6th at 6.45 p.m. Um, they're, they're premiering the Amina Profile, um, which is a Canadian documentary in the, um, in the School of Architecture there. Um, and then they also have other movies happening on Friday, November 6th, same time, different space, um, all over the city and all over, the, all over everything. And the focus of the film festival in, in one sense, as I understand it, is to talk about um, why film festivals are important. I think I have a thing here. No, I don't. Okay. Um, is to talk about the importance of film festivals and culture. And uh, that's going to be hopefully be something that we can maybe bring up as subject matter next week uh, and, and, and talk about it a little bit more. Because mm, yeah. I, I think it's a really interesting topic. What do you guys think about that? I, I, I yeah, that would be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and this might be a way to kind of strengthen the community a little bit more and sort of bring the community into BridgeCast, which was yeah. the whole mission statement right from the beginning. Yeah, so um, this could potentially be something yeah. very exciting. And uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. So yeah. I guess that's a wrap for today. Yeah. Um, you can listen to BridgeCast on YouTube and SoundCloud. Oh, no, on SoundCloud. Yeah, 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 on SoundCloud. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can find us on the bridge page. Um, WaterlooArchitecture.com forward slash bridge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or you could type in Waterloo Architecture Bridge and it'll pop up. Um, that and, too. and I hope you had a good time. We good, did. Yeah. yeah good nice night. With you. Yeah. I was talking to other people in the, in the audience. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good yeah. night, guys. Good night. Or good morning, depending on what time you're listening. <laughs> 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 also you can we're here every tuesday from 9 30 to 10 30 um in the bridge space at 35 37 main street um everyone is who's listening to this is welcome to come out uh and participate um and just you know even if you just want to come and work and listen and uh, listen to us talk you can do that as well um and as Porn said you can find us on bridge youtube soundcloud um hopefully itunes soon i'm still working on that that'll hopefully be a thing I feel like two places is good, but you, you know. Think two? Yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot of people use iTunes for podcasting. I'm just not a big Apple fan. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the more places it shows up, the better. Yeah. 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 Like the more exposure we get, the better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, guess that's. Yep. Okay. Done. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>